Hey, hey, friends. This is Martine Williams, and I am obsessed with all things Mompreneur Life and helping you to remix your priorities, your habits, your mindsets, and yes, even your relationships so that you can build a successful business without losing yourself in the process. I'm also obsessed with the killer turquoise and lyrics of the 80s and 90s, but that's beside the point. Girlfriend, you don't have to hustle 24-7, 365, and continue to sacrifice your health, your relationships, and your sanity to be a successful mompreneur. As a small town girl living in a lonely world to a six-figure mompreneur, I am here to teach you how. There is a better way, and this podcast is your one-stop shop for all of the how-tos, the encouragement, the life hacks, the success tips, and of course, a little side of tough love. This is the Mompreneur Life Remixed Podcast, so let's do this. Hey, hey, everyone. It's Martine Williams, the host of the Mompreneur Life Remix podcast. And today's episode is going to be a turquoise talk episode. I'm going to be interviewing Sarah Dupre, who has been a professional in the advertising industry for 17 years. She started out at large agencies such as Sahachi and Yamaha and ultimately found her place in the marketing world as a commercial photographer. She shot for large companies such as Boot Barn, Sprouts, and Kotex, as well as many local small businesses and entrepreneurs. As a brand photographer, she has worked with highly influential social media personalities like Krista, a.k.a. Salvage Soul, and Kayla Kraft of Mommy Millionaire, as well as TikTok celebrities David Bonfenditti, I think I said that right, a.k.a. The Magic Crasher, and Rachel Mueller, a.k.a. The Girl IQ. Like many entrepreneurs, Sarah spent money on ads while hiding behind her products and services. How many of you feel like you hide behind your products and services? She hated posting pictures of herself, but once she stepped out of her comfort zone, she immediately established authority and trust with her audiences, quickly increasing her sales and taking control of the way she advertised her business. So in this episode, we do talk business and marketing, which I love talking to people in marketing because it's an area that is not my superpower. And so I love to pick people's brain about that. And we also just talk about mompreneur life uh, because she is a mompreneur as well. So I hope you're excited about today's episode and let's get right to it. Welcome back friends to the Mompreneur Life Remixed podcast. Um, I'm really excited about today's episode and honestly, kind of from a selfish standpoint, because being a mompreneur myself, I love to talk to people about marketing. I love to talk to people about social media. I mean, it's ever changing, ever evolving. And so it's really fun not only to talk to a mompreneur, but also specifically on this topic. So I'm excited to have Sarah Dupree on the show. Did I say your last name right? I didn't ask you that before. <laughs> Everybody says Dupree, but it's actually Dupree, but it's Dupre. okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. I should have asked you that before, but thank you so much um, for being on the show. And um, I'm honored well, to have you. you on here. So tell me just a little bit about you, your family, you know, how you and why you became a mompreneur just a little bit more so that the audience kind of knows a little bit about you. Well, yeah, um, I have actually been in the marketing and advertising industry for 17 years. Um, I was working for big agencies like Yamaha, Saatchi and Saatchi and things like that before I had my first son. And after I had him, um, he was failure to thrive. So I felt really passionate about being able to stay home and be with him. Mm -hmm. And I still needed to provide my family, right? Right. So that's how I became a mompreneur, but that's not, that's not really as easy as it sounds, right? Like, right, you say, yeah. oh, I can stay home and I can take care of a baby and I can do the things, but mm-hmm. it's never, it's never quite like that, huh? No, it's not. It's not. It's not always what it looks like on the outside, you know, yeah. uh, being, being a mompreneur, I say, you know, you're always on the clock. As a mom, mm-hmm. as soon as that baby is born, you're always on the clock. Oh, absolutely. I remember uh, when he was a newborn. I'd be sitting there answering emails at like 2 a.m. Like, I wonder if anybody ever checks this. Like, <laughs> what are you doing awake at 2 a.m.? <laughs> That's so funny. We've all done that. We've all done yeah. that because, you know, when they're little like that, you're working in the nooks and crannies of time. Exactly, you know, you're try- yeah. trying trying to get things, da- get things done. So how, do you just have the one son? No, I have two now. Okay. And how old are they now? Um, 13 today, actually, and Aww. 10. Okay. All right. Yeah. I have a 14 year old and a 17 year old. They're both boys. Are yours both boys? Both boys as well. Okay. Yeah. Boy moms. Boy moms unite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, well, the time goes by fast. So the days are long, but the years are short. So it's hard to believe my oldest is 17. He just turned 17. So 
It's oh. kind of crazy. What is one thing that maybe you wish you would have known before, you know, you kind of left corporate because you're not with corporate anymore, right? You're, you're doing your no, own thing. Yeah. So I'm on my own now. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, and how long have you been doing that on your own? Well, since my 13 year old was born, okay. So okay. 13 years about now. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, what do you, what's one thing you wish you would have known before you kind of made that transition? Because I know there's a lot of mompreneurs who are, they're there, right? They maybe just yeah. this year decided to transition out of corporate and into, you know, being a work from home mom or having their own business. So what's something you wish you would have known ahead of time? I mean, a couple of things really, um, looking back on it, going back to that whole, you know, answering emails at 2 a.m. thing. Um, and you do when you start out, I think, work in, like you said, the little nooks and crannies of mm-hmm. time that you get. And I think what's really, really helped me is being more organized as far as that time goes. And um, time blocking has been huge for me, mm-hmm. um, as well as and just really being, you know, strategic about how I'm spending my time. Because now I don't have a newborn anymore, but I do homeschool my okay. 10 year old, as well as, you know, run a business. And, mm-hmm. you know, I have the older kid that's in tournament baseball. So, I mean, my life is still just as busy. It's just busy in a different way. Right. 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 So um, really figuring out how to time block and plan out your day strategically every day makes a huge difference. So you're not up at 2 a.m. answering emails anymore, right? right? And then the other thing that I wish somebody had told me is, you know, yeah, you're a photographer, but you're not a photographer. Like you're a business owner and mm-hmm. you need to separate yourself from being that photographer to being a business owner. Like I really wish that I had grasped that earlier on for sure. Right. And I think in that transition, like it's almost like learning to delegate, right? Some of those, some of those other things that, and maybe even some of the things that you used to love, you know, that Mm -hmm. you've had to kind of put on that CEO hat and that CEO role and delegate some of those things that are asked for help. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you felt like you had, you've had to do too over these years? I mean, yes and no. Um, A lot of, because I, I, I've tried a few times throughout the years to kind of delegate out and be that CEO. But then what that leaves me with is, you know, giving away being able to shoot, being able to do the photography. I do delegate some things like my editing and things like that. So that, that has changed a little bit, but I don't know. I don't want to give up being the photographer, but you can be the photographer and be the CEO. You can be both and you can be passionate right. about what you do and, you know, still be mm-hmm. a business owner, you know? Right. I love that. I love that you, you know, because it's what you're passionate about is what's going to help you come to your desk every day. And, and, and do the CEO stuff, you know, when you're able mm-hmm. to stay true to who you are and um, staying, staying passionate. So with that in mind, first of all, are you more of a paper planner girl when you're talking about making your plan for the day? Or are you like oh, yeah. 100% electronics or a little bit of both? Mm-mm. No, I actually try really hard to um, limit electronics. As far, I mean, especially in today's world, Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's kind of what got me homeschooling my son full time in the first place. He was homeschooled part time, but then a lot of with, you know, everything that happened with COVID and and all of that, I just felt like so much of the education he was getting was online. So taking that back and being able to do a lot of stuff on paper. And I know I'm going like a really weird direction with this, but it's okay kind of what spurred that too. Like, I don't like apps and all that. Like, give me a paper calendar any day (laughs) so I can cross things off. (laughs) I'm the same way. I'd say I'm a little bit of a mix, but I'm definitely, I do better when I keep it, you know, pen to paper. There's no distractions with that piece of paper in front of you. There's all distractions in the world when you're on your phone trying to ask and reminders and, you know, all of that, you got just things fighting for your attention. So how would you say, and we'll kind of skip around a little bit now that we're on this topic of, of cell phones and, and all of that, like, how do you break that cycle or how do you help people to break that cycle of screen time addiction and just kind of reclaim like your life, you know, reclaim your time back? This is actually something I struggle with still. Like, and I think a lot of people do, because like you said, like when you have something that lives on your phone mm-hmm. and a lot of marketing does have to live on your phone, you have the notifications that get pulled up. You, you get pulled in one way and then in another direction. I mean, I have ADHD, but if I didn't, I would feel like I did using it <laughs> every day. Right. So, I mean, really what I've done is, um, this is kind of a new thing. I, I, uh, I child locked myself from my phone. <laughs> I'd so, do that too. <laughs> like after a certain amount of time, they all shut down. Shut down. So, <laughs> and then, and then you really like, then you feel kind of guilty, right? Because then you get the notification saying, ignore them. It's like, oh, oh God, no, maybe. Uh, yes. Okay. Fine. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, but it's that extra step, right? It's kind of reminding you like, hey, you really didn't want to be on the phone longer than this. And kind of like putting that in place has been really helpful and turning off notifications too. So turning off the notifications to all of my social media so that I can plan out when I'm going to go on there mm-hmm. has been a really huge help. And also um, planning ahead as far as my marketing goes, which is um, a huge piece of what doesn't keep me on there as long. So yes, at the beginning of the month, I spend a huge chunk of time on my phone, but that's because I'm putting all of my posts and things into my drafts so that on the daily, I'm only spending one minute on there posting. And -hmm. then I can be really strategic about the time that I'm spending on social media. So instead of spending, you know, a half an hour, an hour, two hours a day creating a post, I post in a minute and then I can spend a half an hour interacting and really gaining followers, gaining engagement, all of that. How much time would you say as a marketing professional should someone be spending? I mean, if they, let's just say they're just utilizing Instagram, they're not mm-hmm. utilizing really any other platform. Like how much time do you think is enough time? Because I do think that's something where we just kind of go down that hole, right? And we yeah. go in there with the intention of posting for the business. And the next thing you know, you're looking at what Susie did that day or, you know, like, oh, I want to go over here or an ad pops up. I mean, there's just, so what would you say if someone was going to block out time, you Mm -hmm. know, to be purposeful and intentional when they get on their social media, what's enough time? You know, a really good rule of thumb is to go in and go in. If you, if you have a business or a um, creator account on Instagram, you can actually see when your peak times to post are. Mm -hmm. So I set an alarm for myself at those times to, to go in and interact for 15 minutes before that peak time. And then I'll post and then I'll interact for 15 minutes after that peak time. Mm -hmm. So um, half an hour minimum that I'm spending in there um, being strategic about what I'm doing. And that doesn't mean going into your feed and seeing what Susie's doing or, you know, your best friend that moved away. There's there's that's your personal time. And you can absolutely allow for that as well. But when you're in there and you're working, you have to work. So you go in and you you look at the hashtags that not just the hashtags that are relevant to your business, but the hashtags that are relevant to your target markets business as well, because they're going to be in there. Let's say you're, you're targeting business coaches, right? Then you would go in and you'd go look at the hashtags that business coaches would look at and you would interact in there and you would interact in all the things because they're tagging business coach, go in there and interact with business coaches. So mm-hmm. then when you do your post, then they're going to go in and they're going to go, Oh, what was that? And then they'll see your brand new post that's relevant to them. And they'll start interacting with you too. And it really helps with engagement. You gain followers from that because they're like, oh my gosh, you're speaking directly to me, right? Right, right, right. Yeah. And so, you know, I've always wondered because I hear marketing professionals talk about, you know, going in and engaging with other accounts, mm-hmm. you know, put that in as, as a time block for you. Mm-hmm. And what does that specifically look like? Like without feeling, because you don't know the person, right? So like when you, when you were doing that and you're engaging with maybe a new account, let's just say you followed the business hashtag and there's someone in there you're trying to engage with. Are mm-hmm. you just, just being you? And is there a certain really? like question you ask? Or are you just seeing what they're talking about and just kind of responding to their, like, what does that process look like logistically? About, I mean, it's all about supporting one another, right? Like okay. you go mm-hmm. in and mm-hmm. what would you want somebody to do with your post? You'd want them to like it. So right. you like it. And right. you go in and you, and you comment on it because that's what you would want somebody to do with your post too. And then they open a conversation with that, then respond back because the more that you can engage with them, the more their engagement goes up and then they're more likely to come in and do the same for you too. Right. Right. Okay. And have you found there's an easy way for people to figure out what those hashtags would be for their particular target audience? Or do you just have yeah. to play around with that? There are some, there are definitely some tricks. You want to um, go in and find hashtags that are both really big and also the ones that are just, you know, not huge yet. So things that are within the hundred thousand range, somewhere in there, you want to go in there and see what's going on. If you're a local business like me, I'll go in and I'll interact a lot with hashtags that have to do with locations. So for me, it would be Temecula, California, or Marietta, or places that are near me. Because then I'm more likely to get people who are interacting with me who are local. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's what you're, you're looking for people that are on site on location for you, right? Because your business is local. Yeah, exactly. So that's, that would be somebody that I interact with. And again, Mm -hmm. like, I mean, whatever your target market is into, like, let's say you're a fitness person and you Mm -hmm. know that your target market is going to be looking for, you know, keto diets. Then you would go in and you'd, you'd look up a hashtag for keto diets. Right. And you would start interacting with that kind of stuff because then your target market will see your comment mm-hmm. and 
or they'll, that will be one of their posts. Right. 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 Okay. And I, I think, I know I mean, this is something that I've struggled with as I've built, you know, my, uh, my other business that I'm, I've been working on the last five years is that target audience. And you hear people talk about niche and, mm-hmm. or, you know, and niching down and, and finding that. And the more you niche down, the better it is. And it's just something, even I see, you know, women that I support, they're just, it's just something they struggle with. You know, what do you put in that one line on Instagram with your bio that's going to grab people's attention? So if someone's listening and that's kind of where they're at, like, I, I kind of know who I want to work with. I kind of know who I want to reach. The hashtags mm-hmm. would be good, but they are not, they haven't targeted it down enough. What would you say would be the most helpful thing for them? Like, where do they start? Well, I mean, Do you have past clients that you can pull from that you can go, yeah, I really loved working with that client. Mm. Like, what is it about that client that really just, you know, lit that fire for you? Right. You want to try to replicate that, right? Because if you were happy working with them, they're going to be happy working with you too. Right. So, you know, you want to find more people like that and really sort of use them as an avatar to create that niche for yourself. That's a great, that's a great tip because you you can get a room full of people and not be the ones you want to do business with. They may want to do business with you, but they may not be the one that you want to do business with. And I and think it does work both ways, right? I mean, yeah. that's what makes if, the partnership so good. Yes, exactly. And if they're not, like, if you're not happy with them, chances are they're probably not going to be happy with you either. And that's not right. something you want to put out there, right? Right, right. Awesome. So when you think about mar- uh, creating a marketing plan and really utilizing social media, you know, for your business without taking so much time away from the business, mm-hmm. where do you start with that? with creating a marketing plan that works, but Mm -hmm. doesn't like burn you out in the process where you just want to put all your social media aside and just be done with it. (laughs) Cause I've Um, been there. I'm like, I just, if if Instagram comes out with one more new feature, like I literally, you know, like, you know what? I don't have to learn that today. I don't have to learn that today. (laughs) I, here's the thing. You keep the basics in mind as far as that goes. Like, yes, they're going to come out with new features and yes, you want to go try the new shiny things Mm -hmm. because that's where they're going to put a lot of their attention. Right. But some things just never change. Like if you're going to put out there, you're going to put content that's over salesy or just not great. Like things that people don't want to interact with and don't want to read and really just aren't interested in, then it's not going to do well, no matter which feature you use. So just making sure that the content that you're creating really speaks directly to your target market is helpful or entertaining. You know, Mm -hmm. they have to have a reason to want to be there. So, I mean, I, for myself, as far as saving that time goes, I spend three days a month on my social media and that's, it's a lot, but at the same time, it's not because if you add it up, the amount of time that you spend every single day trying to post to everything, it adds up to way more. So I just set aside three days. The first day is me planning things out. And that will be, that looks like me keeping my target market in mind, going into Facebook groups, seeing what people are discussing really figuring out what my take on those things are drawing from questions that I got throughout the month and seeing, because the thing is, if somebody's asking you a question, chances are there are so many other people out there that have that same question. And if you have an expert opinion on that, absolutely share that. So right. really drawing from that and just sharing what it is that I did throughout the month, the previous month and gathering all that information. Right. Mm-hmm. And then I turn it into a strategic plan. I go today, I'm going to post this the next day. I'm going to post that the next day, the next day, the next day, the first, the second, third, fourth. And with each of those, I'll figure out what the visual content is. And then, so I have that mapped out and planned. Then another day I'll go in and I'll shoot everything in one day. Okay. So then I have a gallery of everything that I need to pull from. And that can be That can be reels. If you're specifically speaking about Instagram, that can be, I mean, reels are a little bit tougher because you want to stay relevant with like Mm -hmm. the audios and all that. So I would only do those about a week in advance, Mm -hmm. but as far as pictures go, those are timeless. Like you can do those all in one day and have a gallery to pull from and easily post. Like I said, takes a minute. And then as you've planned that out the day before you copyright everything as best you can, there's going to be some tweaks throughout because things change, you know? Right. Yeah. So three three days for the whole month, Mm -hmm. three days for the whole month. It's a lot of work, but you know what? It feels so good the rest of the month. And I know as a mompreneur, I'm not showing up if I don't do that. Right. Right. Is that something that you had to be disciplined to do in the beginning or did it just come naturally to you because your personality to, to batch that out? Because I want to do that. And I keep saying I'm doing that, but I, it's funny because I don't really consider myself someone who shoots from the hip. 
most of the time, like when I'm presenting, like I like a plan, I like a script, like I like to have everything kind of laid out. Whereas some of my other friends just can just pull anything together, you know, at any time, but it's different with my social. Like I, there are some moments where things just come to me right in the day and I go and I do a reel or I go and I do a post. Do you allow for that spontaneity in there too? Or you oh, just, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Like if you have a planned post and you have something that you just, I feel really, I need to share this right now. Or, you know, I saw this audio and I feel like I want to jump on that right now. You can move your posts around. Like yeah. if it's, yeah. a, I mean, a lot of the posts that you've pre-planned out, they can get put anywhere and you, right. I mean, it's just, it's nice to have that leaned on to lean on so that you're not, you know, going to your social media and going, um, now what, what am I going to post today? You know? <laughs> yeah. I know I've been there too. And it's right. not something that comes natural to me. I mean, I transitioned from, I mean, corporate America, like we talked about Mm -hmm. into portrait photography, into wedding photography, and then into brand photography and also commercial photography was kind of mixed in there too. Like I started at Boot Barn and did product photography for them. So it's all this mismatched Mm -hmm. stuff that kind of brought me to where I am today. And I know like when I first started this, I'm like, I get it and I want to do it for everybody, but I'm not going to do it for me. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, now I spent this past month, I had a real good time with it. I brought my friend to a studio. We had a great time taking all of my pictures and then we went out to lunch, but you know, not every month is like that for me. The previous right. month, I literally just walked around with my tripod going to like coffee shops, like setting up a tripod. This is me drinking coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That's, so done, funny. You know? That's right. And nobody knows, you know, well, it's so funny. It's like that meme that says no one knows how much stuff had to be moved out of the way before that photo was posted on Instagram. You know, in the coffee shop knew yeah, they did. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is she doing? Carrying her in drive over there. Oh, well, yeah. you know, get work done. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. No judgment. No judgment. <laughs> um, so with the, the three days again, cause I know someone's going to ask me, well, how long, like each day did you put Not out? A full day. Not, Not a full day. day. I would say yeah. half days work each day because, you know, as far as creativity goes, I feel like it's really draining. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like that sort of work is for me. I don't know if I, I feel like it's a thing, but for me, I feel far more drained when I have to use my creativity. Me so too. I only yeah. give myself a half a day for things like that, because after that I'm done, I'm toast. So yeah. and yeah. I need to still answer the emails and do, you know, the homeschooling, <laughs> all of that. Right. Stuff too, right. Right. Yeah. right. Okay. Awesome. I love those. I love those ideas. So With talking about working and planning and all of the things we talked about to this point, have you ever experienced burnout from whether you were in corporate America or now, you know, homeschooling and and all the things you're doing now? Would you say you've ever experienced burnout? And if you have, what did it feel like? So do you think symptoms and things present differently for different people? And how did you kind of recover from it? Can I say every day? (laughs) (laughs) Say whatever you want. (laughs) I mean, yes, there are times where there's highs and there's lows, right? And I think that's every entrepreneur, like it's a roller coaster. Yeah. And you know, there's there's times where I'm really riding that high on the roller coaster and I'm having a great time. I'm out there shooting with my friends, and those are photo shoot days for me. And then, you know, after that, like I said, there's there is burnout from after photo shoots or you know, when I use my creativity a whole lot. Mm-hmm. I do feel like there are days where I just have to sit on my couch for a couple of days right. and I have to, you know, read a book and drink some tea and maybe have some chocolate. Right. And then you come right back to it because it's something you love, right? Right, right. So chocolate, tea, the couch, those are the ways that you kind of fill your cup back up. Maybe a little romance novel too, you know? Oh, <laughs> right. all right. I like it. I like it. And I think it's important for you to know what that is so yeah. that when you are feeling those moments and I, and I love it. You, you said it with confidence. I don't know if you feel the confidence when you're doing that or whether you have mom guilt or mompreneur guilt because you're not working. Does that yeah. come into play when you're trying to reset and, and kind of realign your emotions and reading that book and having that tea? Do you ever feel like I should be doing something else or are you able to let that go? Oh yeah. I'm able to look. I'm Good. so busy in the times where I'm like, you know, on you, just write yeah. it, you know, yeah. like when I'm up, I get so much done where when I have to take that downtime, it is okay. It is okay. Yeah. And yeah, sometimes I have to drag myself over to the computer and get the stuff done. But I, I reward myself with the idea when I'm feeling that downtime mm-hmm. or when I'm feeling that down in the, in the ride. Right. Mm-hmm. I reward myself with the idea. Yes. You have to get these things out. You have to get these things out to editing, but when you're done, the couch is waiting for you. Your, your novel's waiting for you. You know, some heavenly hunks. 
<laughs> are waiting for you. <laughs> I love to do this. So I'll have, I'll read a romance novel and I'll eat these, these little cookies called heavenly hunks. I'm like, yeah, I've never heard of those. Oh, is that yeah. a Southern California thing? Cause we don't I have don't this know. in the South. I don't think. <laughs> I don't know. They're um, so you can get them from Costco here. And okay. I'm like, I'm going to do a heavenly hunks ad right now. Um, and they're gluten-free and they're delicious little treats that I have. And I feel like they just, they're the perfect little match. for, right. for a romance well, I'm going to have to check out the heavenly hunks. I bet you can probably get them on Amazon too. Then they can get pretty much everything on Amazon. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> like really the same good. day too. <laughs> it's like, a, it's a, it's a little cookie, you know, and yeah. Yeah. you know that the stereotypical, you know, sitting at home eating bonbons. Yeah. Sometimes I do that. I'll yeah. do it. And that's okay. <laughs> And that Everyone's is okay, well. right? I mean, yeah. your, your business and your parenting and all those things are only as good as you are. So if you're not taking that time to refuel and reset, and I think it sets a great example for kids as well, you know, for our children to see us work hard, but also play hard and rest hard, yeah. you know, when we need to, because we don't want them to be living in a constant state of burnout and the world yeah. is just getting faster and faster. I feel like, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. So how do we stand out? from the competition. I love this, um, that this was something that, that you wanted to talk about and just without having to spend, but you know, tons of money in ad space and tons of money into that, which, I mean, I think there's a place for all of it, but like there was a game changer for you, something that you've done that's become, become a game changer for you. So can you share about that? I'm going to do like the city slickers thing. You want to know the secret to marketing? Yes. It's one thing. <laughs> That's the best movie. I haven't, I haven't heard anybody talk about that movie in so long. Oh, I love Billy Crystal. <laughs> it's you. You're what makes your business stand out. You are what's going to make your business different from anything else because there is no other you. So right. there are, I'm in a super saturated field. There are so many photographers out there. It's insane. Everywhere you go, there's a photographer. And you know what? I love them all. They are Mm -hmm. all unique. They're all beautiful artists. And my clients are going to be perfect for me. Their clients are going to be perfect for them. And what really helped me market myself and set myself apart from other photographers, I did the same thing that they did to start. I posted my pictures. I posted the pictures that I took, right? Because Mm -hmm. I want to market my work, right? right? So I would put the pictures out there. Like I took this, I took this, I took this, and I took this. And nobody ever knew who I was. They just saw mm-hmm. my work, which didn't really help me stand out from the other photographers down the road. Right. So now I utilize my social media specifically to share who I am. Mm-hmm. And people who are really drawn to that, they're going to want to hire me because right. my work's beautiful. So is, you know, my friend Amanda's down the street. And so is my friend Isabel's down the street. And The only thing that's really going to make somebody go, you know, what's the difference between these three people is the person, right? Right, right. So I had to step out from behind my service. I had to step out from behind my, for other people, it's their products. And I had to really show who I was Mm -hmm. and it's hard. It's scary, but it really is. what's going to help to market you and separate you from the crowd. Right. I mean, you are your brand, you know, not the products, not the products that you, you know, if you're a network marketing or direct sales, which I used to be in, like, that's not your brand. That's their brand. But, Mm -hmm. you know, there's going to be, I mean, you think about, I always like to think about the different Starbucks or Dunkin', you know, Dunkin' Donuts that are out there. There are specific ones that I go to for specific reasons. You know, most Mm -hmm. time it's the person that served it to me. It's the person, right? It's not necessarily the the brand of coffee. It's that they provide a great experience or they provide great customer service. But I know that a lot of, especially women, they do struggle with confidence and they struggle with talking about themselves and they struggle with getting out from behind the camera and getting in front of the camera to mm-hmm. represent their own brand. So um, was that something you said it was hard, but what, what okay. part of that was hard for you and how did you kind of overcome that? Oh my God. Just doing it? We all do it. I think we all do it. Like I literally just, I just talked about this yesterday. Um, I had to do my shoot, right? I had to market myself mm-hmm. and I had a terrible breakout right before my shoot. But mm-hmm. I'm not going to cancel my shoot for pimples. Like that's just right. ridiculous. You know, I'm not right. going to cancel my marketing for pimples. Mm-hmm. And I think that everybody, if you're, if you, you're going to find excuses, right? If you're mm-hmm. not ready to do that, you're going to find the excuses. You're going to use the pimples. You're going to use the five pounds. Right. You're going to use, you know, the, my hair is not where I want it to be. You're going to use all the excuses and then you're going to end up with no marketing. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you got to just learn how to step away from the excuses and really find your voice. Mm-hmm. And when you find something that you're passionate about sharing, then, you know, being in front of the camera, isn't so scary. Right. And also, I mean, not to be like, you know, Hey, but, um, working with a professional really helps too, because we, if you're feeling uncomfortable about anything, 
If you're feeling uncomfortable about your skin, lighting helps a lot. If you're feeling uncomfortable about your body image, posing helps a lot. And I mean, so if you're, if you're ready to do it, but you're just not quite sure you're feeling confident enough to put yourself out there, find a professional, speak with them, see what their thoughts are. And Mm -hmm. I I'm willing to bet that you're going to feel a whole lot more confident when you go and work with somebody like that. Absolutely. And lighting. I remember the first time I bought a ring light and people like, why are you using that ring light? Like, first of all, because it gives me like great, you know, yeah. (laughs) like, uh, what do they call it? Like it's a form of Botox, but um, it's just gives confidence, you know, and and that's not being vain. It's just, if it's going to allow me to be more confident so I can share my story so I can share and have the impact that I want to have, then there's no shame in that. And I think, I do think that's part of the hang up too, is, well, if I have to get a ring light, then what's wrong with me? you know, or if I have to do hire a professional, then what's wrong with me. But at the end of the day, if you're wanting to make the impact that I know you want to make as a mompreneur with whatever business that you have, then you can do what it takes to get yourself out in front. And, you know, well, I mean, there's no shame in ring lights. There's no shame in good lighting. That's no, feel your beautiful (laughs) face. Like the ring light isn't making you any less you, the ring light is just illuminating it. Good light. Like Mm -hmm. there's, Good light is good light. Bad light is bad light. Like <laughs> there's right. And having something as easy as a ring light, which I'm I have in front of me right now, actually, is just and I do not, as you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't you use that tool, you know, to give right. yourself the confidence? And it's still you. Like it's not like you're putting a filter on there, which right. I have mixed feelings about. Sometimes I do the filters if like lighting isn't available, but you know, I right. also feel like there's a lot of people that kind of lean on them a little bit too much. And it's like, if I were to meet you in person, I know that's not what you look like. Right. You know? right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. also, I mean, it can mess with your own mental health too, when you're constantly using a filter and then you look in the mirror and you're like, wait, that's not the same person that I'm seeing on my own Instagram. Yeah. You know? So I do think we have to be careful. I mean, filters have their place for sure. Um, but, you know, just, just be conscious of that so that mm-hmm. when you do meet that person in person, they're like, oh, that really is you. Yeah. <laughs> and not just a filtered version um, exactly. of you, but yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So as a mompreneur, how do you stay motivated? What's your biggest motivation for, or how, how do you keep that motivation going? I have no lack of motivation. I think as like, I'm a creative mompreneur, right? right so right. I, I constantly got ideas and there's always something new. Like I've, mm-hmm. while I, I lean on the things that are still keeping, like keeping my business afloat, which, you know, would be right now my brand photography. There are other avenues that I explore as well as a creative person. Mm-hmm. And um, that really helps to light me up. So I, I meditate in the morning and I've been, seeing ideas that mm-hmm. I get in those meditations and they're not anything that I could ever use for a branding client, but you know, maybe it is something I would like to try for myself. And I right. did that recently and it took a, t- a, not even kidding you. It took a team of people to drag me out to the shoot to make me do it because it was just <laughs> so like, maybe I'll just take another pretty picture. I can just right. oh, Rachel here. I'll just take a pretty picture. They're like, no, you're doing the thing. And I mean, it took my business coach. It took two of my really good friends who were like, big TikTok people. It took the whole car full of people going, no, you're doing your thing. And I'm like, right. I'll do the thing. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's stepping out of my comfort zone. So I think that that's, yeah. I think that's universal. Stepping out of your comfort zone every once in a while can help to keep you motivated. Yeah. Newness, you know, yeah. getting excited about something new, learning something new. I know it always helps me. What's your favorite social media platform right now? Like, what are you using the most? What would you suggest someone use the most if they really are starting a new business and they want to, you know, meet new people and grow a following? Where would you say they should hang out? I say it depends. Mine is Instagram because I am a photographer. So it's a very visual platform, right? Right. Um, But let's say you are somebody that's doing straight B to B, like business to business, and um, you just want to connect with other businesses, Mm -hmm. um, which... I technically am too, but this platform doesn't work as well for me because I don't have as much of the visual, like Mm -hmm. it's much more wordy, but I would say LinkedIn at that point. Or if you're somebody that's, you know, um, an influencer that leans on blogging or a food blogger or something like that, you would want to do more Pinterest, you know, and a combination of things like that. And right now, a really, if you're feeling really like, you know, feeling like you want to embrace your younger self as an older entrepreneur, like, like, you know, you and I, we're not, you know, twenties anymore. No. Um, <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> um, 
And TikTok is not just for kids anymore. And it's a really fast way to grow, but you got to, you got to go in there and you have to figure out how others are using it and find how you can twist that and make it your unique way without making yourself stand out like a sore thumb. Right. 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 Okay. That's good. Just try them, try different ones. Right. And, and, and see what well, it depends works on who your target market is. So again, yeah. thing, figuring out, going back to that, that niche and figuring out who your ideal target market is, where are they hanging out? Mm-hmm. You know, if they're hanging out on TikTok, then you should probably figure out how to TikTok. If right. they're on Instagram, then go ahead and Instagram. If they're on Facebook, because they're a little bit older and, mm-hmm. you know, maybe they just really like to go on there because they enjoy their groups and stuff, then you should probably be on Facebook, you yeah. know? Yeah. And it's not to say that you should just be on one either. There's mm-hmm. just one that for me, I specifically make my content around Instagram, but it all trickles down to the other ones too, right? Right. So it's just, it starts in Instagram land and then it kind of like travels a little bit. (laughs) Right, trickles out. Yeah, trickles down to all the ones. Do you use a, um, like a Planoly or any of those to kind of like post for Mm -hmm. you? You do all your own posting. So again, mixed feelings. I feel like there's mixed reviews on that, right? Yeah, there are. So there are some experts out there that say that, you know, using those third-party schedulers Mm -hmm. are going to hurt your engagement rate. And then there there are some people out there that say, no, it doesn't make any difference. Mm -hmm. And I think that I've just found certain workarounds that allow me to plan ahead without having to use one of those. So it's like, I'm getting the best of both worlds. Like on Facebook in your, in a Facebook page, you can plan your posts ahead of time. Right. You can can schedule those on Instagram. You can create drafts. Um, Same with uh, TikTok as well. Mm -hmm. So the other ones that I'm scheduling to or that I'm posting to like LinkedIn and Pinterest, I'm just copying and pasting at that point. So I'm not right. really spending right. a whole lot of time recreating anything for those platforms. So when you're doing your, I want to go back to your plan just for a second, when you're doing your marketing plan and you're kind of planning out over your three days, are you mm-hmm. doing like, okay, Instagram, LinkedIn, are you mapping them all out? Are you just, like you said, Instagram, and then you just let them kind of go to the others mm-hmm. on that yeah. day? I go Instagram and I kind of trickle and not the same post for every platform every day either. So like if I'm posting something about my family, that works well for Facebook. Mm -hmm. Um, But if I'm posting something about my business that can go live over on uh, LinkedIn. But, you know, if I'm posting something about my family, LinkedIn doesn't care about my family. No. So um, I'll pull things like, and it lives on Instagram first because that's my main one. Right. Right, Yeah. And then I'll kind of pull them around and I'll move them around on different days. So it's like, Hey, if you didn't catch it over here, you might catch it over here. So I'm reusing, I'm reusing my content over and over and over again for different things. Right. So like you have this podcast right now, Mm -hmm. you can then take that, turn it into a blog post. This right here is several posts for you on your, on anything that we discussed. This is, I mean, a full week's worth of posts right here, you know? Right. Right. Awesome. LinkedIn is one of my things for 2022. Like I've been on LinkedIn forever, but I've never really done much with it. I've never taken the time to kind of learn it because I like the fun of Instagram. I think LinkedIn is definitely way more, like you said, serious. They don't really care about your family, that kind of thing. But um, I hear more and more people talking about that's probably where, you know, some of my clientele would be as well. So Mm -hmm. I have to learn me some LinkedIn. It's not too difficult. And what's great about LinkedIn is that um, you can share other people's articles. That's an easy way to post. Like if you find an article that you really, you know, found Mm -hmm. interesting, just share the article and share your thoughts on it. Like, oh, I just read this article and I really think that, you know, it's, it's this, that, and this, and Mm -hmm. I, this is my opinion on this topic. Right. Check out this person's, you know? Right. Right. Awesome. So if you had a chance to talk to all the mompreneurs, which kind of do here on the podcast, um, (laughs) What's just something you really want to make sure that they understood about being a mompreneur? I would say it's really important to, again, going back to that time blocking, it's really important to be strategic about your time Mm -hmm. because the multitasking thing, it's a myth. Like nobody's multitasking, not well, at least like those people that are out there going, Oh, I'm an amazing multitasker. No, you're not. Nobody is. (laughs) I say all the time, I'm a great multitask starter, but I'm not a great multitask finisher. So I stopped multitasking for that reason. I mean, and here's the thing, like you're putting half of your attention on your business, half of your attention on your family, because you're trying to divide it Mm -hmm. at one time, your family can feel that your, your clients can feel that. And if you can give a hundred percent just by being strategic about your time, why wouldn't you do that? You know? Right. Right. Awesome. Love that. So what are you most excited about right now, Sarah, in the season that you're in either personally or professionally? Like what were you just most excited about? 
Hmm. Oh, I am actually work. I'm coming out with an app. So oh, for anybody, yeah. So for anybody that, yeah. So for anybody that's not in Southern California and really wants to learn more about marketing, how to take better pictures for yourself how to take better pictures for your business, anything, um, what to do with them after you take them, Mm -hmm. how best to use them for your business. This app is going to be great for you. You can go and check it out right now. It's at uh, exposure-app.com. And if it's not live yet, because I'm not sure when this is going to air, but if it's not live yet, you can definitely sign up for the email list so that when it does go live, you can be one of the first people to know. That is so fun. Your yes. own app. There's an app for that. There's an app, There's for, an app for that. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love that. Well, we'll include that in the show notes for y'all to make it easy for you um, to find that. Okay. So I always like to ask this of every uh, guest, what's your favorite book right now? Maybe that you're reading or have ever read. Everything Gabrielle Bernstein, all the Gabrielle Bernsteins. I mean, okay. Universe Has Your Back was my first one that I fell in love with, but I mean, every single one I've read since then has been amazing. So anything to do with Gabrielle Bernstein, I'm a huge fan. Perfect. Um, Do you have a favorite quote or mantra for yourself or for your family? I'm trying to think. I know that there was one that really helped me and I found it on TikTok. Um, (laughs) (laughs) And I was saying, um, oh, what is meant to be, oh, shoot. What is meant to find you will find you. Don't, don't chase. Oh, that's what it is. I don't chase. I attract Mm -hmm. what is meant to be will find me. And it's true, you know, like once I stop chasing those clients down, like you want to work with me, you know, like (laughs) you love me, tell me you love me. (laughs) Once I got out of that, you know, it really did. I attracted the right people that came to me and it doesn't mean that I gave up on my sales. It didn't mean that I gave up on letting people know that I'm out here and really reaching out to people. But you know what, if they were like, um, hmm, I'm going to keep my distance, right? They weren't meant for me. Like, right. Go, ahead, go. I wish you all the love and luck in the world, but you know, we don't need to work together. I hope that your business is highly successful either way, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think when you're in that chasing uh, mentality, it is more of, it's less about you. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like when you're attracting, that's when you're able to show people who you are. That's the only, that's the only way you can attract people to you is for let them, let them see you. Right. When we were talking about you or yeah. your brand, like mm-hmm. until you're willing to do that, it's going to be really hard to attract people because they don't even know who you are. Exactly. So you yeah. Start going in chase mode and you start chasing mm-hmm. after, after things that um, are not meant to be love that. Yeah. yeah. How about a favorite resource or app? Well, we know your app now, but <laughs> is there your favorite resource that you use, whether it be for editing for, you know, TikTok or for time management is what's your, what's your favorite resource or app? Okay. This isn't a resource or app, but I okay. lean heavily on, um, my business coach. Okay. So, um, I think that having a business coach has really helped to take my business to another level simply mm-hmm. because I'm no longer one, I'm no longer out here by myself. Like, you know, as an entrepreneur, a solopreneur, right. there, there's me, it's like, Hey, Sarah, what do you think of this idea? Well, I think it's fantastic. Obviously I thought of it, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to work. <laughs> And then you're out there doing all the things. It's like, what is she doing? Right. Who knows anymore? <laughs> <laughs> like you have somebody that you can go, I have this amazing idea. And then my business coach, the way that she is, she's like, that's not great, Sarah. It's like, no. <laughs> that's what we <laughs> need. The person to tell us what we need to hear, not what we want to hear. Right. Yeah. So like it, push back a it little. can be great, but let's, let's dive into this a little more and see how we can make this idea great. And if it really is something that we need to be putting our time into. And that's another mm-hmm. thing too, as far as having a business coach goes, it helped me stop putting my time to things that weren't really going to be profitable for me. You know, yes, you need to have your time to chase those passions and, you know, try new things and all of that. But if that's all you're doing, (laughs) then your business isn't going to go anywhere. So, um, love my business coach. I highly recommend, uh, she's actually a business uh, psychologist. So nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With that, I've actually learned, um, a lot about confidence for myself and my business as well, which is huge. I mean, I mean, psychology of sales and being in mm-hmm. business, it's, that's where most of the battle is, is up there in our mindset. So Absolutely, I love that. Yeah. I yeah. love that. Is it a one-on-one coaching or is it a mastermind or group coaching? One-on-one coaching. Okay. Um, awesome. You want to give her a shout out? Yes. I was going to say her name is Misty Kerrigan. Okay. <laughs> All right. Amazing. If anybody needs a business psychologist, I highly recommend her. <laughs> is she local to you or is she someone you met she online? Is. Okay. She is, but um, she's free to do, I think she calls them coffee chats. Um, you okay. can coffee chat with her via Zoom if you want to. 
Um, and again, she just, she, I, it is the number one investment I think anybody could make for their business is I agree. A business coach a thousand. I agree. Yeah. If you're not willing to invest in yourself, you can't expect other people to invest in you, right. And oh, what you have to so offer. True. So yeah, yeah. So true. yeah I'm a, Absolutely. I love, I've had a coach for over 15 years and it's the single most, the best investment I ever made. I wouldn't be where I'm at today if I didn't have a coach. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of laughed at coaches when they first kind of started coming out. I'm like, you're a life coach. Like you help people get through life. Really? Like, <laughs> Which is what I do. So I'm glad you're not laughing at that no, anymore. I'm not anymore. No, I a thousand percent stand behind the life coaches, the business coaches. You guys are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> we all need them. And, and I, I honestly tell people when you're looking for a coach or a mentor or a program, if, if they're not being coached or mentored, that's a red flag for me because mm-hmm. I think if you never arrive as a coach or a business owner. Um, you, there's always things for you to learn, right. And always things for yeah. you to, to work through. So um, if they're, you know, if they're not walking the walk and they're just giving you lip service on it. That's a red flag for me. So yeah. Anyway, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much. This was so fun. (laughs) It really was. Thank you so much. This was really fun. And we'll put all of the links to all the things we talked about in the show notes for everybody so they can connect with you. So Instagram is your platform of choice, right? But you're on TikTok too. I am, but my TikTok is going to be more about how we were discussing the personal projects. I'm going to kind of gear my um, TikTok more towards that. So if you're interested in seeing some more of the fine art side of what I'm working on, mm-hmm. um, you can go find me at and on TikTok. It's Sarah D Photos. And mm-hmm. then if you're interested in the business aspect, as far as marketing and brand photography, commercial photography, um, Instagram is Sarah D dot photos. Okay. Awesome. I'm so excited. Well, thank thank you so much for being on the show. And um, thank you all for tuning in for the Mompreneur Life Remix podcast. This was the Turquoise Talk. I didn't say that at the beginning, but y'all know that's how we roll when we have our interviews. They're the Turquoise Talks. And um, I will catch y'all on the next episode. Well, that's a wrap, friends, for this week's episode of the Mompreneur Life Remixed podcast. Thank you so much for listening and for following the show. It means so much to me. And listen, friend, sharing is caring. So if you loved this episode and thought of some fellow mompreneurs who could benefit, send them the link, share this episode, or take a screenshot and head on over to Instagram and share and tag me at martine31williams. We are connected on Instagram, right? It's where you will get all the fun behind the scenes of my life and business as a mompreneur. Until next time, know that I am believing in you always. Mm -hmm.